DJ Betts featuring Jordan Allen and Dagan Parker. DJ Betts. Hi, I'm Jordan Allen here. You're listening and watching to DJ Betts. We have a very special guest who's joining us, Doug Kazarian. Thanks for coming in. Doug is the host of the Daily Wager on ESPN. You can catch him Monday to Friday, 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern time. Dagan Parker with me too. Guys, we're going to break down the NCAA March Madness Tournament, Sweet 16 specifically. Let's go right into the Sweet 16 matchup in San Francisco, Arkansas-Gonzaga. Doug, who do you like in this game from a betting perspective? So I've been kind of fading Gonzaga for a while now. I do think – I would not be shocked if they won it all. I just don't think they're going to. I don't think they're as good as last year's team. I think they have limited physicality in the paint. Some rim projection with Holmgren, but obviously his stature is not that thick. So when you have a team like Arkansas, and even we saw with Memphis, they're going to keep it within the number. Now, if they just shoot lights out, they shoot lights out, so be it. But I, I do like Arkansas on the points here. I think Gonzaga is going to win, but I wouldn't be stunned – if the Hogs win. Yeah, absolutely. And and the, and, the th- and the thing about Arkansas is, Doug, is they do compete. Musselman has those guys grinding hard. And that's going to be, that's going to be take a toll on Gonzaga, I think. I mean, really the only advantage with Gonzaga is the fact that they've got the bigs, obviously, in Holmgren and Timmy. But at the end of the day, March Madness, anything can happen, right? Well, that yeah, and it's a sing- single game, right, format. So, uh, look. The Zags were awesome last year. Baylor was a great team, and they went all the way to the championship game. I'm just not that impressed with Gonzaga this year. They're, like I said, deservedly a one seed, all that good stuff. But I just don't think they're that special. But I don't think the field is that impressive, right? The other popular picks to win it all, whether it be Arizona or even some Villanovas out there, uh, Kansas, like those teams are all beatable as well. So it's a pretty level playing field in my eyes. And if the Zags prevail, they that's great. Then they do. And finally got over the hump. And I'm certainly a guy who's rooted for the underdog over the years, going back to Baylor and, excuse me, not Baylor, Butler and, and Duke in the championship game and Gordon Hayward's half-court shot. Like, I want to see it happen for sure. I'm just, you know, we're trying to handicap what we think is going to happen. Now, you yeah. mentioned Duke there. What do you think of the Duke-Texas Tech game? Because that game is the most intriguing one in the Sweet 16 for, for me, myself. Yeah, so I'm on the Red Raiders minus the one, but I fully expect to lose the bet. Uh, <laughs> I, I just think it's going to all come down to how the, the the game is officiated and if Texas yeah. Tech is able to play its physical defense. And I just don't know if they're going to be allowed to against Duke and Coach K's last hurrah and all that stuff. Now, they've been allowed to play th- that way so far. Maybe they will, but I just think they're a better team than Duke. It is interesting that it's only the second time Duke has not been favored over a lower seed. Uh, only other time was the 2004 Final Four. Uh, it was the UConn. So uh, it is interesting that Texas Tech's a point favorite. I think they're, that's the right number. I think they're better. Uh, the offense is better than people realize. I think it got bogged down a little bit in Big 12 play when the opponent is familiar with the offense. But now you're out of conference. I, don't, I think they'll be able to score a little bit. And obviously, they have the top-ranked defense at Ken Palm. Yeah, and their you, offensive you, rebounding is good as well. Mm-hmm. What, yeah. do you, what do you think is the – key for Texas Tech beating Duke in this matchup? I think it's the, the the officiating. I think if they're allowed to do what they want to do, I think Duke's going to get manhandled. I don't think Duke has the shooting. I think Duke can kind of, uh, you can break their will a little bit. That's what Virginia Tech did in that ACC championship game in the tournament when they just hit everything and Duke was kind of uh, bailing out on offense and shooting when they didn't really want to. Syracuse even did that to them a little bit in the tournament, even Miami for that matter. Duke's good. Obviously got some lottery picks, um, but I think Texas Tech, if they set the tone, they can sort of control the, 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 the vibe of the game. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, it's going to be a tight game. As you said, obviously the spread speaks for itself. Um, but you know what? Like, as we all know, anything can happen. We, we don't know what's going to happen, and that's why it's called March Madness. But uh, moving on to another matchup that's – very intriguing for me, actually, is Michigan Villanova. I mean, Michigan has been battling every single game. This for me, this is a tough game, but I wanted to get your opinion where you're leaning here. Uh, well, I don't have a good read on Villanova all season, so it's really tough for me. I think they're the backstory of Martelli having coached St. Joe's and the familiarity with Jay Wright. I think there's something to be said about that, and it'll help 
Michigan adjust because remember these games are it's different in conference tournaments every day consecutively familiar to opponent but the quick turnaround on the weekends and the tournament's different and then also this you know three four days to prepare for an opponent gives both sides something to consider I, I would have to lean to Michigan in the points if I had to take something just because it's five and they may have too much size but I, I trust Villanova more and Villanova excuse me Michigan's been all over the place uh this season so if I had to um it would be the Wolverines and the points, but with zero confidence. Yeah, and Gillespie yeah, no, coming I, back I totally for the understand. extra year helps Nova as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, and and the thing with Michigan too is, I mean, you know, they've been on a roll ever since, like ever since the tournament. So I, I, I feel like it's going to be a tight game, but, and and I see where you're going, trusting Villanova more so, which which I get, and Jay Wright. And, and the one thing, Doug, I want to get your opinion on, because I know a lot of people – see it this way is guard play being extremely crucial in this tournament and obviously Colin Gillespie being one of the best in the nation I think gives Villanova that edge but what's what's your take on that yeah so basically the thing you learn as a player is that just the magnitude of each possession that matters so much more in the tournament your season's on the line in that game and then that starts with the with the point guard play right the guard play just the control the ball and, and, and take care of it because of the magnitude of every possession. So I, I, you're right. Michigan, excuse me, Villanova's been there. You, you trust guys like Gillespie. But I think the Michigan players know what's, it's, what's on the line here. I don't think that's fair. I just I don't want to overreact to such a surprising and impressive win over Tennessee that let's just not forget the body of work for Michigan instead of just one game that happened to be their most recent. Yeah, no, abs- absolutely. I mean... <laughs> It's it's always it's always crazy what goes on, but oh, I'm 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 with you on that on the five on the five and a half right now, uh, taking the points of Michigan. Um, next next game on the slate, Doug. I think this is going to be an absolute battle, just end to end physical game. Is Houston Arizona? Who do you like in this matchup here? No, it's it's going to be a serious battle, and I was yeah. originally going into my bracket thinking I was going to pick Arizona to win it all. And this game got me off it. I was like, well, that's really early for it to be a coin flip game. Houston's really tough, metrics-wise, top 15 in both offense and defense. Now, some of the guys they had to help those metrics not playing. But Arizona's really good. Um, The size, obviously, they have great guard play. I mean, look, it's just going to be one of those games where it's going to come down to, like, make or miss situation, right? If one team is hot from three, then then so be it. And I I would not see – I don't feel the need to bet this game. Um Maybe Arizona, because I think they're more battle-tested. American Conference wasn't very good. Pac-12, obviously, only had three teams in the in the big dance. But that would be my apprehension, uh, would be how good is Houston. They obviously played great against Illinois, but I don't think Illinois, I think they've been shaky. Yeah, I know for sure. The one thing I wanted to ask you about Arizona, if this concerns you whatsoever, is Kirk Kreese's injury. Right. I mean, we all saw does. that tweet, right, in his whole – ankle and part of his leg is all flamed up and bruised does that concern you at all with Arizona going into this game yeah I mean that's a big factor right like obviously them at full strength would be favored by a little bit more I think maybe Uh, I mean you know only star players really drive drive it but yeah no that's for sure a a concern but again these teams going to shoot so well and 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 it's just going to come down to like a few shots I know that sounds such an oversimplification but I really do believe that yeah, no, I mean, it, it, it's going to be battle tested, as we all know, it's going to going to come down to the wire. But I, I think with Houston is, is, as you said, like they're very physical, uh, great, up, great crash in the glass. I mean, that's going to be tough for Arizona. Um, but again, it's it's a game that I'm going to stay away from. I'm definitely on board with you when it when it comes to that. But um, no, I, I completely agree. One one game. And I, and I know it, the spread is big, and that's St. Peter's Purdue. Purdue favored by 12 and a half. This is a stay away for me, even though I know St. Peter's has been covering their spread, and they've been very consistent. Do you like anything in this game, Doug? I, mean, I, I lean to the dog here. I can't lay the points. I don't think they're going to win. Yeah. But then again, I didn't think they'd win the first two games. Uh, I don't trust Purdue's defense, and Purdue is shaky in Big Ten play at times. I think that, you know, they won the regular season, and they have the size to dominate. That's something that, that concerns me if I was going to grab the 12 and a half with St. Peter's. But I just I just think they have enough in the tank to stay kind of hot and keep this inside the number. I, I just think 
12 and a half is such a big number that you kind of hang around enough, you know, you can, you can, you can get comfortable. And even if Purdue pulls away, 12 and a half is still a big number, but it's not one of my favorite plays by at all. Yeah. So that, that number scares me because how is St. Peter's going to defend inside in the right. post and how the ref's going to call that inside the post. And to me, that's the scary thing about this number, even though I am on St. Peter's and, and the 12 and a half. It, that that's makes me a little leery about it myself. Yeah. It feels like that second half of Georgia state and Gonzaga, you know, yeah, you get some of these exactly. bench players guarding one of the bigs and it's like, Oh boy, here yep. we go. Yep. If for some reason St. Peter's pulls off this miraculous upset, how do you see that playing out? Doug, if, if, if it somehow happens, well, 15 seeds, Never made it past the Sweet 16. There's only been two to reach the Sweet 16. Both covered it in that Sweet 16 game, but loss. I I, I just think it's one of those where they just get super hot, and Purdue has to shoot themselves in the foot, kind of like Kentucky did. Miss free throws. That's what did the Wildcats in, but they were still up six. But uh, Kentucky got very elementary on offense, very limited, couldn't shoot the ball. If Purdue doesn't hit shots, and St. Peter's plays great team defense like they did against UK, then I think that's sort of the recipe for success. Because if you can just shorten these games, right? Uh, prevent foul trouble, prevent gimme, gimme points, and enforce misses. Uh, all of a sudden, it turns into a second half game. It's you know tight at half, and you, know, you can just kind of hang around with ten minutes to go. That's sort of the, the blueprint. Yeah, I, absolutely. I mean, as you said, it's it is a lot of points. So, I mean, where do you lean? If I had if I had to take, I'm with you. I'm taking the points with St. Peter's, but right, that's what I would. The do. end of the day, just yeah. a lean. But at the end of the day, I think it's too risky because. They could either get blown out. I mean, it's well, yeah, or, right. <laughs> that's how that's how it usually goes, <laughs> right? Yeah, that, but I, that's the trickiness of these double digit spreads. Yeah, yeah. and and I got to be honest, like I've been staying away from the double digit spreads during this tournament. Have you have you had that same feeling? Well, I was on I was on Kentucky against St. Peter's. I thought it was such a mismatch. Yeah. And coming in, I mean, look, it was. I mean, the St. Peter's team was not know. very strong, but Kentucky was shaky looking back. So that was a, that was a mistake, obviously on my end. It wasn't just the results driven. The, the Kentucky component was 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 shaky but it just depends i mean for every st peter's there's also you know baylor and kansas that roll in the first round too and and cover these huge numbers and so i don't try to have these blanket statements it's really game by game yeah yeah it it, it is and i don't know for me personally i i like to stay away from those double digit spreads because i've been screwed on the many times so you can find I stick some to value the single after, digit. if you look you can find some value on a few of them though i mean you can like during the season i definitely did uh throughout the regular season of ncaa basketball but during the tournament i've i've honestly been staying away doug i, I want to get your opinion on this because live betting is huge now and that's actually something that i've been capitalizing on when arizona was down you know the other night um against TCU I I hammered Arizona like have you been taking advantage of those opportunities yeah I would say 95 percent of my action is live betting so that's really all I do do, and that's all I've done for so long I just think there's better ways to uh, kind of get involved and that's the recipe for success in my world Um, obviously closing line value beating the market ahead of time that is certainly a proven way to win Uh, I just feel if you have a kind of good feel for games and things like that live betting is away now some places do a 30 cent straddle charge you a little extra tax because of the uh, inefficiency of the live betting market but i think the trade-off is still advantageous yeah Yeah, absolutely i love it yeah i was i was gonna say um because with arizona um when when they were down like they were plus 130 only down three points so i was looking at the line while i was watching the game and i'm thinking really like this this look it it, it, (laughs) It's great and when it works out, but there have been plenty right. of upsets where it didn't. Like Tennessee was probably plus 130 against Michigan when they were down a little bit. Kentucky, the same. Yep. Um, it, it's nice to say, gosh, that was such an easy bet after the fact, but that there's a reason these these algorithms and these books still win, I think, on live wagering, although I also think there's more vulnerability there. Yes, yes, there is. And 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 you're and you're right. Like it, it obviously depends on the team and when and when and what end up ends up happening. Man, I was sweating out that TCU Arizona game, but they got it done. And and you know what? At the end of the day, I, I thought that they would eventually get TCU in overtime. I think when a good team 
is down and then comes back and pushes the game to overtime. I think a lot of the time they end up coming out on top. Do you see that same result as well? Yeah, it just depends. I don't want to generalize too much. I mean, a lot is dictated by foul trouble in this case. Um, you know, injury. I mean, you just don't know. I mean, look at Baylor and North Carolina. I would have bet the farm that Baylor was going to win in overtime once they came all the way back and forced OT. I thought there was no way UNC would pick themselves off the mat and, and win in overtime, but they did. And, and so give Baylor credit and all that for mounting that huge comeback and forcing OT. But you know, Carolina. So like it, it, you can, again, I can't generalize now the, the, the better team would be favored in the life market going into overtime. That's just the way it is because the game line was that way, but foul trouble is a huge component to things. And, um, not just guys who are out, but guys who have, you know, one away from being fouled out. Yeah, no, for sure. And, and, and the thing is, is that taking advantage of that, of the live betting is just huge. Like I know I've been doing it throughout the whole tournament um, I know Dagan, you've been, you've been taking advantage too. It's just something that people are doing now because a lot of the time, honestly, Doug, like I'll look at the lines and I'll just say, I, like, I don't like a lot of these games. So yeah. I want to see how it's going to play out live. Right. Yeah. The market's tight. And, and especially these, you know, these are all out of conference, right? Conference play. We kind of know the matchups, but we don't know how much the Purdue size is going to control the, the paint of St. Peter's. Right. Yeah. So you kind of want to see it happen and then you can make a, I think a more, uh, at least more informed decision, if you want to call it that. Yes. Yes. I, 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 I mean, there's no question. And, and as you said, like the books, the books adjust, mm -hmm. but sometimes that obviously works out in our favor. Right. So we got to roll with the punches there. Um, the other, the other game that, um, that I wanted to touch on was uh, UNC North Carolina uh, that we were, that we were just, talking about um north carolina the dog two and a half i'm leaning towards carolina but wanted to get your thoughts on this matchup and where you want where you're going to put your money if you do in fact like the game yeah i think if they both if you told me ahead of time they both were going to play their best game i would take north carolina i think they'll, they could dominate the boards and and shoot well enough i just don't think i'm going to get that from unc all the time i i kind of know what i'm getting with ucla especially after last year's run They've been banged up a lot this year, and it's been a different guy. It was Cody Riley early in the season than the other two stars later in the year. So I just think now that they're healthy, I just feel like they can win an ugly game and they can win a high-scoring game. I, I think Carolina's a better shooting team, but I don't necessarily think that Carolina team will show up, and, and that's the risk you have to take with these somewhat inconsistent teams. Yeah, I mean, it's true. And, and, and to your point, UNC blowing that 25-point lead that yeah. sort of worries me, right? Yeah, no, I mean, look, they, we've seen every team's bad, not just UNC. We've seen other teams bad. That all It exists. It's all out there, right? Uh, maybe Gonzaga's bad is very limited, like, I don't know, the, the Georgia State situation, the first 30 minutes, that was not good. And even losing to St. Mary's, although St. Mary's hit every shot in that game. So I would say that was kind of but, – but for the most part, every team's had some bad play. Maybe not Kansas – um, Arizona really has it. I mean, they blew the lead at halftime and lost by double digits in Boulder, but you can almost excuse that. It's a tough, tough road trip there. And, uh, losing at UCLA is nothing to sneeze at too. So maybe a team like Arizona has really no bad, but for the most part, everyone's got their, their worst version out there on tape. And if it's going to show up, I mean, I go back to that final four from a handful of years ago when Villanova played Oklahoma, when buddy healed Oklahoma had no shot. They missed every shot. They were down 30, like right away. And that's just one of those games where it's like, all right, this team belonged in the final four, but not the version that showed up. That team just didn't play well. And that happens. Right. Okay. So, so ultimately you're leaning towards North Carolina. No, you... I lean UCLA. Oh, yeah. you're, UCLA. Oh, okay. so, yeah. Yeah. You're, you're leaning UCLA now. Correct. Do you, do you think that the game is going to be a blow or do no, you think no, no, it'll no, be no. close? It'll be close. It'll be okay. very close. Yeah. Okay. Do you, do you think that, having UNC's run by beating Duke um, at last game at Cameron, does that have any effect in their confidence in this game, knowing that they can beat anybody? Yeah, I think beating a team like that gives you confidence for sure, especially on the road. And uh, I also think advancing this far does, beating Baylor and just getting this far. I, I think this UNC team, and, and, and I've always said, you know, like we, many people do, Teams are an extension of their coach sometimes. And and with Roy Williams being as decorated as he is, I think sometimes they're like a little soft, those North Carolina teams. And they lose an edge. And they, you, they're they favorites in the tournament and, and lose outright. I think under Hubert, it's a much different situation. 
And this team has a little backbone. And I think we saw that with overtime after blowing the leads, coming back and winning. So uh, I, I think they're in good position. I wouldn't be shocked if they advance and, frankly, advance the Final Four. I, I like – they have all the makings. I mean, even though they're an eight seed, they have the makings. So why not? But I just lean to the Bruins here. No, no, no. That's – I mean, listen, that that's fair. I, I think this is a very tough game. I'm leaning towards North Carolina, but yeah, I'm I could on see UCLA. a – You're on UCLA as well. Yeah. I mean, I could see it playing out either way. Um, but at the end of the day, um, yeah, I, I, I'm confident it'll be a close game. Um, I, I don't see, I don't see it being a blowout um, in any. I just, I think both teams match up decently, and, and I, and I, and as you said, like both teams playing well right now. I think, I think it's tough to to say that this would be a blowout game. Like I know we've been surprised. In March Madness, but I think once you get to the later rounds, like the Sweet 16 and the Elite Eight, I, I don't, I don't think a lot of games are going to be blow. To my opinion, what do you think about that, Doug? I, I think case by case, like I mentioned, that Oklahoma <clears throat> Villanova yeah. game. Excuse me. Um, some teams can't hit the broadside of a barn. There's nothing you can do about it. So you're right. The, the spreads would indicate a lot more close games, and maybe a couple games. Maybe Kansas could roll, but I don't think so. Maybe Purdue, but. For the most part, yeah, we're getting deep in the tournament. This is uh, we're, we've been Darwinism, and the teams that are left, we're going to come down to the to the end and lower scoring games, right? So versus like the NBA, so you have some, you know, Iowa State, Miami's one thirty three total. Um, that's hard to have a blowout when you have totals that low, and so all, all it has all the makings of tight games down the stretch with about seven minutes to go, five minutes to go. Yeah, no question about it. And I was I was going to ask you about Kansas Providence because to me that's a very intriguing matchup, especially from a betting point of view. For me, I love Providence getting the seven and a half points. How do you feel about? Yeah, that? I'm not sold. Uh, so okay. I like this Providence team. I know they've been a very divisive team in the betting community and the sports community, the college hoops fans, and just saying they're lucky and blah blah blah. I think it yeah. gets it's a tired narrative. I, I think they're good and polished, and if they shoot well again, then they're going to beat Kansas because I think KU's shooting can be shaky. I mean, obviously, Abaji's there, but um, that that does concern me. I don't know if Remy Martin's going to be able to deliver shooting like he did against Texas Tech in the Big 12 championship game. And Providence, I would definitely take Providence before I would lay it with Kansas. Yeah, I mean, you have to. And, and I agree with you. This whole luck thing about Providence is just driving me crazy. Like, I look into analytics, and I definitely – use them to support my opinion and you know my gambling decisions but come on like providence has been a good team all year ed cooley is in the running for national coach of the year i mean what are we even doing here like luck like come on you don't win that many games just based on luck <laughs> well you know sometimes they say great players create their own luck and i think the friars have done just that yeah right right exactly but you know, I we've been here, and you're right. We've been hearing about this narrative over and over. So to me, maybe maybe this sounds a little bit crazy, but I think that motivates Providence a lot more to give Kansas like a a really. So my, competitive my apprehension game. on that is saying, yeah. okay, so if that criticism and 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 skepticism of Providence didn't exist, then they wouldn't be fully motivated in a Sweet 16 game, like. Saying like, oh, it's bulletin board material in like the Super Bowl. It's like, well, does that mean they're, they weren't going to try that hard in the Super Bowl? So I, I just think I you're going to get Providence's focused week of practice regardless. I think they may get a couple questions about the luck or whatever you want to call it. But at the end of the day, like you're getting everyone's maximum attention and effort here. Yeah, every kid yeah, wants yeah. to play hard in that tournament. Right. They're, right from the start. They're, there's no team that doesn't want to be there. Precisely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get that. I, I just thought that it would add a little bit more fuel to the fire for Providence, knowing that everybody's been knocking them about this whole luck thing. I don't know. That's just how I feel about it. But obviously, we'll see. We'll see how that plays out. Um, in terms of the Providence Kansas matchup, where do you see the advantages and the disadvantages on both sides? Well, I, I think Kansas can just you know, with team defense and they can run with and, and score and transition. I mean, that's going to be the issue. But if Providence can hit their shots, I, I this is going to be a great game. I, I really think this could be a great game if PC shows up and we see the version of the Friars we want to see. Yeah. Yeah. I, and, and again, as I said, like a lot of the Sweet 16 games are pretty close. Um, 
And, and I think that, yeah, Kansas will give them a run and Providence will battle back. And I mean, my one concern, and I know, I know you mentioned this um, before, but um, Providence has to shoot well. And overall, Providence is not a good all around shooting team. Correct. So that's one of my worries against Kansas who can, who can get hot. Like, as you said, a bodgy Christian Brown. I mean, if they're hot, I, I don't know. It could be, it could be Kansas. Of course. I mean, that's the beauty of the games, right? That's why we watch, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was, I was going to ask you, Doug. Um, so if you had to select your final four and I know it's a little early, but we got to make our predictions. Who would it be and why? Uh, I definitely, I definitely like Kansas to prevail. Um, and so I just, I guess it's still going to be Gonzaga. Um, I have to see the bracket. I'm kind of lost here. No problem. Go, go ahead. Pull it up. But, um, it, I just don't, I don't know where Gonzaga is going to lose before the final four. So I, I just don't think it's going to be uh, Arkansas and I don't think it's going to be Texas tech or whatever. It could be tech, but I just don't think it will be. Uh, I, I, I actually like UCLA. I, I think whoever wins that game is going to beat Purdue. Uh, so UCLA or North Carolina, but I would, I would take UCLA at this point. I would take probably Villanova just game theory. Like they're more likely to get to the elite eight than Arizona or Houston because the point spread. So I would take Villanova just from a game theory standpoint and then Kansas. Nice. Oh, that's, that's, so that's, that's where fair. I would sit. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Dagan, who do you have in your final four right now? I I like UCLA. I like Texas Tech. Hold up. I got to pull it up again. No worries. UCLA, Texas Tech. Uh, in the South. I, I, I can't decide. Arizona, Villanova. I keep flip-flopping. I'm going to stick with my original with Arizona, though. I've had them since the get-go. And then Kansas. Yeah. yeah, no, I get. But that. I wouldn't be for surprised me, if Nova won. Yeah, yeah for sure. I mean, I, I'm I'm sticking to what I predicted before the season: Arizona, Gonzaga, oh, wow. Kansas, and I think UNC gets there. I'm going to take a flyer on UNC to get to the Final Four. Wow, that's my Final Four, and then coming down to the championship game, I think it's going to be. I know it's chalk, but I think it's going to be Gonzaga, Arizona, and I think Arizona wins it all. Who do you, who can, do you have, Doug? I can see it all playing out that way. I don't know, to be honest. Um, you know, I got to just, you know, kind of like see the next games and, and handicap like we were talking about the Sweet 16 games. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's oh, yeah, I agree. It's kind of a wait and see until we get that Elite Eight sort of out of the way. Elite Eight games set up, I mean, so we see them matchups. Yeah. And, and, you know, we, 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 we will see what happens. I mean, that's just the nature of March madness, right? Um, all right. So Dagan, so just to recap, you've got UCLA, Texas tech, Arizona. Yeah. That you're yep. locking in yep. Arizona for your yep. final four. Yep. Okay. And Kansas, right? Yep. All right. And, and Doug said that he's got Gonzaga. He's got UCLA. He's got Arizona and he's got Kansas, right? Correct. Yeah. All right. Anyways, Doug, we really appreciate you coming on and joining us on DJ Bets. Uh, for Jordan Allen, Doug Kazarian, Dagan Parker, we really appreciate it, guys. Please don't forget to subscribe. We have new episodes every single week. Follow us at DJ Bet Z and enjoy the night of sports. The madness is going to be phenomenal. We can't wait. Take care, guys. All the best. DJ Bets featuring Jordan Allen. And Dagan Parker. Mm -hmm. D -D 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 -D. J. Betts. <laughs>